Frost, don't you look like the picture of spring? It's springtime. You are Miss Somewhere. You are Miss Easter, <laughs> no doubt about it. Yeah. Nice to see you again, Nice Jane. to see you too. Plans for Easter this year? Um, you yes. You usually go down to the White House, don't you? That's right. Uh, we usually read children's books on the White House lawn, and we mm -hmm. were invited again this year, but this year I'm making a movie for CBS, which James is directing, mm -hmm. in Toronto. I just got the day off today to come see you. Yeah. And it's called Blackout. So I will be shooting there, but my family are flying out. The twins are already there, and uh, Sean and Katie are going to be flying out. To How old are the twins now? How old four. are all, all the kids? Well, the twins, John and Chris, are almost four and a half. Yeah. Um, Sean's 14, Katie's 18, she's at Columbia University, Jenny's almost 20, she's at Vassar. Gosh, what a and, family. And Kaylin's 22 and he's just about to graduate USC Film School. No kidding. Yeah. Well, that's wonderful. Six altogether. Mm -hmm. Now, the little ones, do they, um, do they, how can I word this because I don't want to, you know, but I mean the Easter Bunny. Yeah. The Easter Bunny. The Easter Bunny. Does he still live? Uh, in oh, yeah. I haven't screwed that one up yet. I, I like the Easter Bunny. And in England, we had hot cross buns. That was what I really liked. Oh, is that what they hide? Yeah. They, hot cross well, no, they didn't hide those. We used to hide, you know, you paint the eggs and hide them like you do here. Yeah. The only thing is, I, I was never really that crazy about chocolate. So it got to a point where I asked my mother and father whether, instead of having a chocolate uh, uh, eggs, if I could have pickled onions and pickled gherkins instead. <laughs> so I had a sort of Pick, a pickled basket wow. for Easter. And that, and that accounts for your cravings of salt? <laughs> yeah, my, my father had this brilliant idea. He was a doctor, and, and he believed that whatever you conditioned kids to have, you know, like, you're really good, you can have a candy, right? So he said, you're really good, you can have a taste of salt. So <laughs> it's a disaster. Anywhere around nachos, pistachio nuts, you oh, know, yeah. English twiglets, oh, sure. peanuts, it's all over for me. But you're also kind of like a health uh, freak, too, right? I mean, you oh. really watch the kids and what they eat. Um, no, I eat healthy food because I happen to like it, mm -hmm. and uh, my kids like eating what I eat. So we take them for special treats to take them to a sushi bar, and of course they love sashimi because no one ever told them that raw tuna fish was yuck. Yeah. You see, they think it's delicious. So their idea of a really big treat is raw tuna fish. Broccoli, they think, is the coolest thing ever because we call them trees, and they get to dip it and eat it with yeah. their fingers. And um, Enabi, you know, the little soybeans, fresh soybeans, mm -hmm. they have that for school. Wow, these kids are really something. Yeah. But raw tuna, I could never warm up to that. <laughs> never! <laughs> well, they sushi, love it. no sushi, they, no. They absolutely love it. But I've come to the conclusion that if you tell your kids that something's really delicious and you're happily eating it alongside them, then they want something, you know, that you have. But, sure. You know, if you eat, say, some sort of awful cream puff thing and then tell them, no, you mustn't have this, you can guarantee that's what they're going to want. Yeah, absolutely. There's a whole science to raising children, no doubt about they it. They do what you do. Yeah. How are you, how are you doing on the Internet? You know, that <laughs> I, I have discovered recently that there are actually some Bash Regis websites springing up oh, yeah. on the Internet. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, think bash they're ba I think they're bashing me, too. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't seen any, but I, I understand the right. You've got the same thing well, going? No. I mean, an extraordinary thing happened. I did this wonderful show, Dr. Quinn Medicine sure. Woman, for six and a half seasons. And we had the most thank you. <laughs> and as you can see, we had a great, great following. And when it was taken off the air, everyone got nuts and mad, and, and, they, and they were very vocal to, to CBS. And actually, in some ways, I guess, you know, it was a good thing because we got to do a movie of the week last year, and I'm now doing another one this year of, of Dr. Quinn. But... The interesting thing is that they're all talking amongst themselves, and I, I, I'm not on the net very often, so I don't get to see it, but I, get, I hear about it. And they come up with all these rumors about, oh, well, you know, Jane doesn't want to do it, or Jane doesn't do it, she's paid ten times as much, or, you know, I, I mean, horrible, silly things that are not the truth. Yeah, and I keep like wondering, a public forum. Yeah, but they all make up the stories, and they make it up amongst themselves, you know, and of course, <laughs> the, the, the worse it is, the better. But, you know, if anyone's interested in Dr. Quinn, I'll tell you right now, CBS wants to make it. They want it, they uh, are waiting for a, a story from um, Beth Sullivan right now, Joe and, and I are really happy to go do it, and as many of the cast members as are available and as fit into that storyline want to be there, we'll be there. Oh, well, that's good. How's that? Well, that that's clears that up, I would say. Yeah. yeah. What are some of the... Uh... And I'm not getting a raise, okay. <laughs> <laughs> what are some of the other things you've uh, heard about yourself? Oh, this wasn't on the internet, but this actually made us laugh. When I did Dr. Quinn, as you know, I was like in the mud, and oh, you know, yeah. I mean, like, literally, was it, was, it was a rough show. Tough shoot. Tough shoot. And I'm you know, I'm game for all that. In fact, I used to, to save time, I used to change clothes in front of the entire crew in a ditch, you know, just say, everyone turn your back, I'm changing, you know, that way we can save the light. 
And um, somebody must have got bored in England because they wrote in a, a newspaper once that I had rainwater flown in on a 747 every week from England because it's the only way I'd wash my hair. <laughs> I mean, lot. California rainwater was on my hair every day, as I recall. <laughs> and, uh, and, that, and that I hated mud. So there was a little minion, a person with a little red carpet that ran around everyone, Dr. Quinn, making sure that my feet never touched the mud. Oh, no kidding. And that, and that ended up then, of course, on a radio station in New York because they found it amusing. And now it's what they call a factoid. So, yeah. you know, unless I go and sue somebody for saying it the first yeah, time, this is now an indelible part of my history, you know. Ridiculous, isn't it's, it? The it's way ridiculous. things get started and stick to you. <laughs> but that was really silly, isn't it? All right, so what's new? You, you've got a new movie coming up on Showtime, right? I've got a great movie. I'm really proud of it. It's called Enslavement, uh, the true life story of Fanny Kemble. Mm -hmm. She was a remarkable actress in the 1830s who came to America on tour um, playing Shakespeare. She gave up acting, the height of her fame, to marry an American, a Philadelphian called Pierce Butler. He inherited a plantation in the South. He had 600 slaves working for him. And she went to live with him and was so appalled by the conditions of the slaves and so appalled by slavery in general that eventually she tried to help the slaves and she tried to help them escape and she got caught and all kinds of amazing things happened. And eventually she had to give up her own children because of her beliefs that slavery should be abolished. And ultimately, many years later, um, she published her journals and the Queen of England and Parliament saw them and they stopped supporting the South. They were going to support the South in the Civil oh, War financially yeah. and because of Fanny Kemble's journals they didn't. So it's a, a really imp important piece and it's wow. wonderful. And wonderful how do you hear about something like that? How did you find out about this woman? Well, we have a production company and we're always looking for really great projects and we read tons and tons and tons and uh, Susan Cooper and Paul Tarbley, producers, came to us with this with a story idea mm. and we said, is this true? And we said, mm. they said yes and we read all the research and then we worked on it for five years before we could get it made. No kidding. And um, it's really, it's a great story. It's a big tearjerker mm. and it's true and it's very... Impactful. Who plays your husband in this? Keith Carradine plays my oh, husband. Keith Carradine. And yeah. then there's a man that I actually fall in love with, but nothing happens with, playing the doctor, Dr. Houston, who's played by James Keach, who's my real husband. That's right. You've got a quite yeah. a cast there. But well, um, originally, he directs the movie. Uh -huh. He directed and produced it. And he only ended up acting in it because when it got down to the, the bottom line, we'd run out of money in the budget for an actor that could play that role that was mm -hmm. good enough. Mm -hmm. And so Showtime asked him if he would play it. Why not? And now, of course, people who've seen it are offering him more and more acting parts. So there you I don't go. Know you almost lost a director here. Yeah, Let's take a look at a clip now. Here you are. You're arguing with the your husband, uh, Keith Carradine, yeah. about the enslavement of the slaves. Take a look at this. Must I confine you to the house? I forbid you to go to the slave camp anymore. And this, this renovation of the infirmary will stop. But why? A healthy slave is a working slave. Get maximum efficiency from your property. Don't mock me, Fanny. Three slaves have died in that hellish pit since we arrived. To give the sick minimum care doesn't seem too much to ask for. Why didn't you consult me first? You are my wife. Behave like one or I'll pack you off in the next steamer home, alone. Maybe separation from your children will restore your sense of marital obligation. My God, you wouldn't dare. If you force me, I will, I assure you. I will no longer visit the slave camp, if you wish. But please let me restore the infirmary. Jane Seymour, Candy Kimball. Quite a story. It's yeah. a great story. You, you do need to have some uh, Kleenex with you because it's yeah. very moving. Um, a lot of people who've seen it say it, it is the best work that James and I have ever done. That's terrific. It's and 8 o'clock this uh, Sunday night on Showtime. Jane, have a happy Easter. Great to see you. Thanks so much.